Sur les Ugandais, I greet all of you, the people of Uganda, and congratulate you on finishing the year 2016, and wish you a prosperous 2017. I extend condolences to the families who lost their dear ones in the year that is just ended. During this year of 2016, we had successful general elections. We also had local government elections. I congratulate the people of Uganda for successfully participating in and organizing the series of elections at the national, local, and municipal level. I congratulate all the leaders that were elected of whatever party and advise them to remain close with the people who elected them. When I visit the villages, I find that a lot can be achieved if you maintain contact with the population. You can capture their, their, their needs, but also convey to them the national plans so that they know what can be done and what cannot be done and why. That should be the duty of every leader, especially the NM leaders. At the beginning of this term of office, 2016-2021, I issued 23 guidelines or directives to the new government. And so far, in the last six months, the following have been achieved. Number one, there has been final, there, there, they have finalized a plan for re-establishing the national carrier of Uganda Airlines. This will reduce on the financial hemorrhage to other airlines by the Ugandans who travel and those, you, those, those other people who travel to and from Uganda. We didn't think, I didn't think that it was necessary to have a national airline. I believe that we could share airlines with our brother countries. However, due to some probable lack of coordination, we find that Ugandans who are traveling and people are traveling to Uganda are very much inconvenienced and sometimes even disadvantaged by using the airlines of our brother uh, countries. It has therefore uh, become necessary to start or restart our own national airline. The crucial element for the success of a national airline is the numbers of the people who travel to and from Uganda, both Ugandan and non-Ugandan. I've been told that these numbers are big. They are bigger than they were in the past and that therefore they can sustain uh, a national airline. The investment climate has also been worked on 
the investment climate advisor and management uh, efforts by the Ministry of uh, Finance have been enhanced by ensuring statistics that would be available to the investors. 400 million shillings has been uh, allocated to make sure that feasibility studies are done project, major project by major project and made available to the investors so that they can be, be able to see uh, whether they can profitably invest in an area or not. Availability of ready information for the investors will quicken decision making by the investors. Construction of more than 100 water schemes across the country in some of the following areas has helped, will also help to create a base for the infrastructure of the country as where water is concerned. There has been a work on the Buko gravity flow scheme on the Bukedia gravity flow scheme Parombo Okoro Olirim 2 Bududa 2 Buko 2 Shuku Masioro uh, Shuku Mas is different from Masioro and then Masioro Graft Frost Schemes Ogiri There's a, a water program in Chiboga There's another, in, another one in Rutilugando Loro Padibe Abo Rashamayle Trading Center, Nemuluka Trading Center, Amdat, Bibia Elegu, Oyam, Nyahuka, Kasaga Mankariro. Many other programs are being worked on, including programs for the water stress areas like Isinjiro Kanga. Rakai and uh, Namayimu. Those areas do not have uh, underground water source. Uh, therefore, we shall have to rely on bulk wa water transfer from the nearby water bodies like the Kagera River uh, in the case of the Singer of Kanga. The lakes like Kachir and Kijanwarora for Kochi, uh, Rakai, uh, and also the Victoria for Namayu. Mm. As far as water for, water for production is concerned, there has been expansion of the Mobuku uh, irrigation scheme of Chivimba and of Doha rice scheme. There has also been completion of Kaharo, gravity flow scheme in Kavari. The following water schemes for production are planned, are planned for Andivo, Dam in Nebi District, Renga Irrigation Scheme in Kavari District, Ongole, Dam in Katapi. Mavera Dam in Mbarara, Orange Irrigation Scheme in Lira District, and Leia Dam, Leia Dam in the Kori, the Kori District, and a number of small mini irrigation schemes that will be uh, implemented 
to mitigate the current pattern of rainfall, uh, rainfall and reliability and stop depending on nature uh, only and rely also on man-made irrigation systems. In order not to continue being dependent on nature, we are going to start with more irrigation schemes around Mount, the Mount Renzori, Mount Eregon, and the Agoro Hills. These are easier because we use gravity on account of the good gradient and just channel the water to the required points. The irrigation schemes around uh, these big mountains, which God gave, gave, gave for, to us for free, uh, is easy because here you don't have to pump any water. The gradient is high. Uh, all you need is to channel the water to where you want it to, to, to go by having channels or, or pipes or whatever method of conveyance you use. With regard to the lowlands, we are encouraging the manufacture, to the manufacture within country, or at least assembling within country, of affordable solar-powered water pumps. I call upon individuals who have means to equip their farms with these pumps at their, co at their own cost. The Uganda Development Bank should look at the possibility of using the money we give them to fund such acquisitions with low interest rate uh, loans, maybe 20% per annum or thereabout would be a reasonable rate, uh, interest rate. Additionally, using government money, we shall slowly start equipping villages with communal solar-powered water pumps. Why I encourage those who are able to buy these solar water, solar powered water pumps themselves. I know that many in the villages may not afford. Therefore, for the villages, we shall slowly uh, make available government funded solar powered water pumps. We have, we have indeed already started. There are already solar-powered water pumps at Kandago in Uchiga, Nyadri in Maracha, a place called Kololo in Ajumani, Inomo in Apache, Kavira in Rakai, Tibenyea in Hoima, etc. etc. These efforts will be scaled up from being only water for consumption to be or to, to also having water for irrigation in this coming financial year. 130 new water irrigation schemes are planned for financial year 2017-2018 across the country. This effort of providing water for production for irrigation is in order to immunize ourselves against the eruptiveness of rains. This effort of irrigation must, however, go hand in hand with the wetlands preservation and restoration, as well as protecting all our fresh water bodies, the lakes and the rivers. Where, where will then the water come from if we do not protect the water bodies? If we do not protect and restore the water bodies, where will the water for irrigation come from? In a way, it is good that uh, the need for irrigation has been uh, uh, brought to the forefront so that people can understand the importance of water. This water which God gave us, gave, gave for us free, on the surface, 
We don't have to irrigate. We don't have to breathe. We don't have to breathe to look for this water. It is on the surface, either either in the wetlands or in the lakes or in the rivers. Uh, yet our people have just been destroying it uh, carelessly. And yet everybody knows that water is is really life. Not only for uh, for livestock, but also for crops and for the human beings. I think that for now, we are logic with, 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 with clearly uh, prepare us to the more rational use of our resources. The water in the wetlands the water in the lakes, the water in the rivers, protected, restored where it has been encroached on, will now help us to do the irrigation and do other things, fish farming and so on. Very profitable activities which can be done without damaging the, the environment. This is what some people call sustainable use of these uh, water bodies. Movement has also been registered on the side of petroleum. You know we have, we have got that idle resource in in in, in Mutanzige, what the Europeans call the Calvert. That idle resource there is uh, petroleum and gas. Uh, in these six, six months since the new government started, eight new production licenses were granted in August, and these include Mpota, Nzizi, Walaga, Kasamene, Wailidi. Kagogore, Ngara, Usoga, Ngenge Fields operated by Talo, Gunya, Ngiri, Jobiri operated by Total. This granting of production license is a step forward for people who may not know much about this field. The first first effort in petroleum was exploration. We had to look for the oil by using scientific methods, by using aeromagnetic survey, gravity flow, science, seismology, and eventually drilling. So that was step number one. That's how we were able to know that there is considerable uh, petroleum and gas in Mutanzi. The second phase was to verify. I've forgotten the, the scientific name they use, but this is to confirm, to, to, to know exactly how much. Uh, yes, the petroleum is there, but how much and of what quality. Now, that phase has been finished. And now we enter the third phase of these 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 companies giving giving being given license to start producing the oil. That's why I think that what is very important. Not no longer exploration license, no longer verification license, but now production license. 
you are authorized to produce the oil. That's what it means now. On the side of minerals, there are a lot of minerals in Uganda which have been being mishandled by small scale miners who behave in a chaotic way and the department has also been lax. It has not been controlling the, uh, these mining activities. I give very strict orders in the 23 guidelines on this issue. Now the department has introduced uh, biometric registration of all small scale miners. Every miner must be registered biometrically by the computer. All the small scale miners must be licensed. Also, the big investors are being licensed. And the two must work, work together without interfering with each other. In the guidelines, which were detailed, I described the, the relationship between the uh, Aruvio miners and the bigger investors. When you find this Aruvio gold, for instance, The particles of gold which are scattered in uh, in soils. These are coming from a rock somewhere of gold. Therefore, the small scale miners who, who are taking the, the, the gold from the soils should not interfere <laughs> with the one who is looking for the rock where the wood is coming from. I compared it to, to bread. This is what we uh, call it in Yankore. Fragments of, uh, of from, from the crust of the bread. You can find some fragments. And you pick those. <laughs> but you should know that these fragments are coming from a loaf of bread. So it's not, it's not why it's just because you the fragments and you forget that there, is, there must be a loaf. Where did these fragments come from? There must have been some the, 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 the real loaf. So therefore, the big miners, because normally the, this big loaf of, of bread is deep in the soil, it's not on the surface. And it needs somebody with uh, more means, with more technology to, 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 to locate the loaf. Uh, so these people are gathering the, the fragments. <laughs> should not interfere with that. Don't come here. Uh, we, are, we are the ones in charge. But you are just concentrating in just uh, uh, the fragments. So the department must uh, will uh, ensure harmony between these two groups. The ones who are picking the fra fragments must all be registered. Nobody should operate in Uganda without being registered. And they must uh, sell their gold to the to, to known to known dealers. Fortunately a gold refiner has been established uh, in, in, in Delhi. And that gold refinery is now refining the gold to final the final stage. So instead of smuggling your gold out, it should be sold to the refinery, the refinery processes it and then sells it formally so that the whole country gets money.
on the side of electricity, because in, in the 23 guidelines, I also noted that we now have enough electricity in the country, but the price is still high, especially for the manufacturers. The reason the, the price is still high is mainly because of Bujagari, Bujagari power dam. Our people negotiated that deal, negotiated it badly, and the price of the electricity produced by Bujagari is, 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 is too high. It is 11 American cents. Yet, the, the price of the electricity of Narubari, the old power station, is now one cent, one 1.04 cents per unit. So the other one is 11 times more expensive than, the, than this one. Uh, yet this is not necessary. The financiers of Bujagar can still make good profit if they charge lower, lower price. The only difference is that they will recover their money after a longer period than recovering the money quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, it does not solve. I, when I was in New York, I discussed with the people of uh, the financiers of Bujagari, the international finance company, uh, and we agreed that it was not correct to undermine industrialization in Uganda uh, so that these uh, lenders get quick, quick, quick uh, uh, payments. It was better they get decent uh, profits but uh, recover the money uh, after a longer period and therefore be able to sell to, to the, especially the manufacturers, electricity at lower rates. Right now, we actually, we actually have a surplus of electricity, and we are building more dams, as you know. Our plan is to build more and more dams, not only on all the sites of the Nairo River, such as Ayago, 840 megawatts, or Yang, 392 megawatts, Uhuru, 400 megawatts, Kiba, 300 megawatts, etc. But also to develop over 40 mini hydro dams already identified across the country. Our plan and program, it's not just a plan, it's now a program being implemented is not only to build power dams on all the sites on the Nile, but even on the smaller, or smaller rivers. Some of them are already under construction. These include Nyagak 3, which will give us 5.4 megawatts, Nyamwamba, which will give us 9 megawatts, Mvumba, which will give us 5.4 megawatts, Aswa Agago, which will give us 83 megawatts. Now, this does not include the ones which are already finished, because there are those like Bugoye, that was finished long ago, uh, like uh, Ishasha, which was finished long ago, like uh, Bugoye, which was finished long ago, like Nyagaki one, like uh, the Biseruka, all these were already uh, operating. With abundant and cheaper electricity, our pace of industrialization will, will, will pick up. 
We are going to provide electricity at the cost of five American cents per unit for the manufacturers. More electricity and better network of roads will mean faster industrialization. The only issue here is the, the role of the decision makers. What I've made clear in the past is that we are not going to tolerate anybody who delays investors when it comes to decision making. This is simply not acceptable. In the past, we didn't have the electricity, we didn't have this one, we didn't have that one. Now we have some of those things. Therefore, everybody concerned must move very fast so that no investor from within or from out is frustrated on account of bureaucratic uh, procrastination. Hence, as projected by the National Planning Authority, the middle income status will be attained by 2020 if all of us move fast. I've told you before how Uganda was bleeding unnecessarily on account of unnecessary and excessive imports, importing. Many Ugandan business people specialize in buying okugura from outside. And many of them do very little selling. Kutunda. Those two words. Kugula and okutunda. We must do more kutunda than just kugula. kugula. I'm glad that I'm, I am a seller. I'm not a <laughs> I sell my cows and my milk. So I am adding to your blood, not subtracting from your blood. Uh, and from outside, I try to buy as very, as very little as possible. Even the shirt I'm putting on is from night here. I don't like putting on shoes because many of these shoes are still being made outside. So when you see, when you see me coming to a function not in shoes, if you want to put, me, put on shoes permanently, please make them here. Then I will even sleep at night in a suit. Uh -huh. But I don't like buying buying from other people. Okugura with very little okutunda by us. Many of the people we call rich in Uganda specialize not in building factories or hotels, but in building shopping arcades that specialize in selling to our people all sorts of imported goods. As a consequence of this, Uganda donates to China US dollars 875 million per year. I, told, I gave you these figures in, in, in a previous speech in the State of the Nation, but I don't mind repeating them now. To India, US dollars 1.1 billion per year. To European Union, 637 million per year. To USA, 89 million dollars per year. To South Africa, 257 million dollars per year. To UAE, 406 million per year. ETC, ETC. Yet our own exports to China are only $54 million now per year. To India, only 24 
$1.8 million per year. To South Africa, only $4.7 million per year. To UAE, only $62 million per year. It is only to, it is only to the European Union that we export U.S. dollars $433 million per year. This is mainly because of raw materials, of coffee, uh, things like that, and maybe tea. And, uh, and to commerce EAC, where we export goods and services worth $2 billion per year. It is only to the EAC and the commercial that our exports are healthy. Uh, they are mainly food, although some of it is, is not processed, because sometimes we sell unprocessed maize, we sell cows with their skins and their horns and so on. Uh, but we also sell industrial products to our neighbors, cement, steel bars, sugar, soap, beer, th those ones are, that's a healthy, healthy uh, relationship. Uh, only that we need also to process all the foods that we sell. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be selling unprocessed uh, uh, maize or cows with their horns and their skins and so on. The cows should be slaughtered here. We have now got an abattoir at, uh, in all this, well, a number of abattoirs, one at in Bombo, one in uh, Utarangwa. I hear another one is also coming up in Nshara. The cows should go to the abattoir, you remove the skin. Skin is uh, sent for making shoes. Then you, you send the beef. The horns are kept for other purposes. That should be done. But at least with the region, we are a bit healthy in terms of the spectrum of our exports. Many of them are final products. Soap, sugar, uh, final or intermediate products beer, cement, and so on. In this hemorrhage, textiles take $888 million per year. Cars, $568 million per year. Leather goods, $22 million per year. Alcohol and beverages, $68 million per year in 2014. 2014, 2015. Foods and food extracts, U.S. dollars 612 million. This is not only a hemorrhage of money, but also of jobs. Building up our textile industry, which we have already started on in modest ways, would not only save U.S. dollars 888 million in imports, but would also create for us a total of 45,000 jobs from about 25 to 30 factories, each of the size of Nightyear, fully operational. This, I had given you this information when I made the State of the Nation address, but I don't mind repeating it because you remember uh, Moses went to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments uh, about, uh, I think, 5,000 years ago. That's when Moses went up to the mountain and got the Ten Commandments. Uh, and every Sunday, the, the, the priests are reminding us of the Ten Commandments, but not an, an, advo an underdeveloped uh, population. The service, service sector is growing very well, spurred on by peace and better roads. 
it is growing at the rate of 5.3% per annum. Especially for tourism, what is now lacking is publicity. The tourism board will aggressively inform the world about our unique climate as well as flora and fauna. Services money is easy money for us, especially tourism money. The ICT sector has been facilitated by the building of the ICT backbone and the undersea cables to Kenya and Tanzania. This has lowered the cost of internet bandwidth from $1,200 per month to US dollar 300 per month and is expected to reduce to f f reduce further to US dollars 150 per month within the next 12 months. Uganda investment therefore will use this capacity, this new capacity to attract new investors in this sector. With our brothers and sisters in Africa, through East African community and Comesa, we have already built regional markets for our producers. They can export to the region. We have also negotiated for external markets such as Agoa, EBA, the access to the Chinese and the Indian markets. All these efforts will translate into more jobs for our youth. Uganda already has 3,100 factories and 3,475 tourism related companies and assets. The two are already employing about 1.1 million people. So you can see that what we are talking about is not just uh, uh, theory. If you take the public service, all of it together, the army, the police, the teachers, the health workers, the politicians, all of them total to about 400,000 people. But the factories and the service companies in spite of all the problems they, are still, they, have, they have been having, are, are already employing 1.1 million people. That is three times as many as the ones working in the public service. So you see the way, the way, is, is, the way is, is clear. This has been achieved in spite of the bottlenecks of lack of electricity and high transport costs in the past. Now that we are addressing the issues of electricity and transport costs, our progress will be much faster. As I told you before, Uganda, in the last 13 years, has been at peace for the first time in 500 years. I'm taking 2003 because that's when we defeated coin. In, in, in Teso and chased him out of Uganda and we disarmed the cattle wrestlers in Karamoja. Therefore, for the last 13 years, Uganda has been at total peace for the first time in 500 years. Uganda will remain at peace. The recent uh, issues of Kasese uh, were, were, were limited and uh, they were handled expeditiously. I want to assure you, Ugandans, that nobody has the capacity to disturb this peace, however hard they may try. Therefore, my dear Ugandans, I can, confidently, I can confidently tell you that the future is bright. 
if we care for one another, if we celebrate our diversity instead of, of resenting it, if we resist the divisionism and stay united, we will achieve greatness. Let us all join hands and declare the new year to be our year of prosperity, the year of building on the strong foundation we have laid to secure Uganda's future, the year in which we upscale our efforts in agriculture from depending on just the rain to also depending on man-made irrigation. I wish you all a happy and prosperous New Year of 2017. Thank you.